Hello and welcome to today's episode of the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Workers at Del Monte, Kenya go on strike. Kashmiri journalist and student Sajid Gul arrested. ECOWAS sanctions Mali over election delay. And Colombia records fourth massacre of 2022. Now, first story, plantation workers at the Del Monte Food Corporation have gone on strike in Kenya. Over 6,000 workers walked out over the weekend, citing inhuman working conditions. As per local reports, workers have accused the company of violating the collective bargaining agreement. They have also stated that the company subcontracted certain operations without informing them. Moreover, existing workers have stated that they are unable to afford food and rent due to extremely low wages. Other issues include labor rights violations, bribery, and casualizations. Workers have also raised allegation of the irregular dismissal of union representatives. The strike is being supported by the Kenya Plantation and Agricultural Workers Union, or the KPAWU. A day after the workers downed their tools, Del Monte declared that the strike was illegal. It has since then held talks with the KPAW. The company has also claimed that the subcontracting will not impact unionized workers. Del Monte Kenya Limited is the country's largest producer and exporter of pineapple products and fruit beverages. The company has been repeatedly accused of human and labor rights violations dating back to the 1990s. These included intimidation of union workers, poor wages, unsafe conditions, and exposure to toxic chemicals. Beyond its own facilities, Del Monte also stands accused of grave abuses, including torture against the Kandara Residents Association. The group has been involved in a years-long legal battle with Del Monte over land rights. Now we take a look at India, where activists and rights groups are demanding the release of arrested Kashmiri journalist Sajid Gul. The 26-year-old trainee reporter and student was arrested by police last week. This was after he posted a video of a protest against the killing of an alleged lashkar e taiba commander. The militant Salim Pare was killed in an encounter on the outskirts of Srinagar. Gul posted a video showing Pare's kin protesting his death and purportedly raising anti-India slogans. The Kashmir Wala reported that Sajid Gul was detained by the army in a raid on January 5th. He was charged under three sections of the Indian Penal Code. These are related to criminal conspiracy, assertions prejudicial to national integration, and fear or alarm to the public. The police later released a statement accusing Gul of spreading disinformation and supposedly provoking people to resort to violence. Prior to his arrest last week, Gul had spoken about continued harassment and intimidation. In 2020, he was charged with rioting, trespassing, and assault for covering a demolition drive in Bandipura. He was summoned and threatened again in October. This was linked to a video and an article he wrote about a 25-year-old man killed in a gunfight. The legal team of the Kashmirwala, where Gul was working, filed an application for his bail on January 10th. His detention has been condemned as part of the growing persecution of journalists in Jammu and Kashmir. In our next story, the West African regional bloc ECOWAS has imposed sweeping economic sanctions against Mali. The 15 member countries have also shut down their borders. The actions are in response to a delay in elections by Mali's military junta. In 2020, Colonel Asimi Goita led a coup against President Ibrahim Boubacar Keita. At this time, Mali was witnessing mass protests against the France-backed government and imperialist interventions in Mali. After the coup, an interim government was established amid threats of sanctions. Elections to establish civilian rule were scheduled for February 2022. Months later, Goita led a second coup in May 2021, ousting acting president Bay Madwa. Mali was suspended from ECOWAS shortly after that. After Goita seized power, the bloc demanded that he abide by the 2022 election deadline. Following a national conference in December, the acting government presented an election schedule. Under the new proposal, 
elections would be held in December 2025 instead of next month. ECOWAS released a statement declaring the proposal unacceptable. Aside from sealing its border, the group has also suspended non-essential financial transactions, Malian assets being held in ECOWAS central and commercial banks have also been blocked. The Regional Monetary Union, the UEMOA, has also ordered all affiliated organizations to suspend Mali. In response to these steps, Mali announced on Monday that it would be sealing its border and severing diplomatic ties. And now for a final story. Colombia has documented four massacres within the first nine days of 2022. The cases have been documented by the Institute of Development and Peace Studies, or INDEPAS. Three members of a family, including a 17-year-old boy, were killed by unidentified attackers on January 9th. The incident took place in the Magdalena department. Later that day, three people were killed and four were injured in a similar attack in the Nariño department. Activists and rights groups in Colombia have condemned the surge in such kind of violence under far-right president Ivan Duque. In 2021, the country registered a record 96 incidents of massacres. These killings took place alongside the assassination of 171 environmental defenders, indigenous peoples and peasants' unions and other social leaders. The UN has previously warned the possibility of systematic murders of such leaders. The surge in violence is being driven by paramilitary and illegally armed groups, drug trafficking and illegal cocoa trade and mining. The incidents reported in 2021 also led to an unprecedented 169% rise in forced displacements across Colombia. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you.